on the next World in America. We make the acquaintance of the Dominican American community. We celebrate their rich heritage and ancestry. Taste selections from their mouth-watering cuisine. And partake in their vibrant festivities. from a Dominican to work hard. Like any community, like any culture, they're just here to, to do their best, to reach their dreams. We like warm people. We like to invite people to the house. They're very um, attached to their culture. You know, they want to be identified as Dominican. A Caribbean nation, the Dominican Republic is located on the island of Hispaniola, sharing it with its neighbor Haiti. Second largest nation in the Caribbean after Cuba, the island has been inhabited by the Tainos since the 7th century. It became the first European settlement in 1492, when Christopher Columbus occupied the island for Spain, calling it La Española. He later established the first Spanish colony in the Western Hemisphere, the city of Isabella, named after the Queen of Spain. His brother, Bartholomew Columbus, later established the famous settlement of Santo Domingo. Enslaved to work in gold mines, the Tainos of Hispaniola died at a rapid speed through oppression, hunger, mass killings, and widespread diseases. In the beginning of the 16th century, Spain began importing slaves to the Caribbean, introducing Africans to the island, making today's Dominican Republic a nation ethnically mixed primarily with African, European, and Taino ancestries. After three centuries of Spanish rule, which ended in 1821, the nation went through tumultuous years of occupations, dictatorships, and interventions by Haiti, Spain, and the United States. The Leathernecks were airlifted to the capital of Santo Domingo, where they killed two snipers who attacked the U.S. Embassy. President Johnson ordered the troop movement when it appeared doubtful that a stable government could be established immediately. The rebels claimed rule of the country, but their regime collapsed when neutral naval and army units joined government forces led by General Vesson Vesson. He was the leader of the rebellion in 1963 that ousted President Bosch on charges that he was pro-Castro. Recovering from such political and economic tribulations, today the Dominican Republic has one of the largest economies in Central America and the Caribbean. Starting with the 1960s, large numbers of Dominicans began their migration to the United States for greener pastures. Currently, there are more than half a million Dominicans living in the States, mostly in the Northeast. Significant numbers of Dominicans migrating to the United States will begin uh, in the mid to late 60s. Many Dominicans uh, came from rural backgrounds uh, with little formal education. Like many other ethnic groups, the Dominicans landed on American shores to fulfill their dreams and aspirations. In the hope of providing for their families and securing better opportunities, Many Dominicans spread their roots in the United States. Milkyes Flores is a second-generation Dominican who spent her life shuttling between her newfound home and the Dominican Republic. My name is Milkis Milkyes Flores Peralta, and um, Peralta is my married name, Flores is my maiden name, and it's customary for us to keep both our names um, when we get married. Um, right now, I'm not working. I was teaching for a bit. Um, I'm waiting for the birth of my child in October, and uh, I was born in the United States, in New York City, Brooklyn, and, but I was raised both in the Dominican Republic and in the United States. 
My name is Ana Vega. I come to the United States in 1972. And I am a truck driver. His name is Alberto Escaño. His name is Luis Alberto Escaño. He came here at the age of 45. And um, he started working here. He started at a grocery store. And now he works for a training supply company in Scranton, Pennsylvania. For many Dominicans, like the Escanos, America provides a space to build a life not predetermined by education or social class, but on hard work and persistence. Luis Escano started his grocery store at the ripe age of 43, fulfilling his long-lost dream of building something on his very own. This is the place where you, you know, come to make it, right? And there's a famous saying for Dominicans, right? Estamos aquí para lo que venimos. Right? We're here for what we came for, and what we came for is usually a better life in terms of uh, economic opportunities, job, but also education for our, uh, our children. My mother, she came, uh, I believe she was 14, and my dad, he came a lot older, but he only has a sixth grade edu education, and my mom never graduated from high school, but they're able to live the American dream. They own their own home. You know, they work every day, they have nice cars, you know, they, they're able to, to, America offers that to them. In our countries, Latinos, we don't pursue the dream of America. He came to this country like most Latin, Latin, Latinos to, uh, to better himself. Um, he came to, to live that dream, the American dream. Um, because America offers that, it's very hospitable and they offer that, they offer the opportunity to better yourself. As long as you're, you work hard, you're going to get somewhere. Hailing from the sultry, tropical Dominican Republic, these folks find it hard to bundle up and taste the biting cold winters in America. Apart from this main challenge, Dominicans are also sometimes faced with a stumbling block of not being well versed in English. Some of the challenges uh, were English, learning the language. But also the climate, it's very cold. <laughs> you know, over there it's 70 all the time or 80 and it's warm and it's tropical. Sometimes uh, it's hard to get the job because you're Spanish. Many Dominicans adjust to their new surroundings by maintaining a healthy connection to ties back home. By visiting often and practicing cherished customs, they make sure that these roots remain watered. They believe that only a healthy understanding of one's past can pave the way for a successful future. We are a diaspora, but we also exist in a transnational world, like many other immigrants. Many of us go once a year, maybe more, back to our family. Uh, because it's very important for us. I'm also, you know, ethnically a Dominican. My family has a particular history that comes from the Caribbean, from the Dominican Republic, and we celebrate that. A cherished Dominican custom is the making of faceless dolls. Since Dominicans are of various ethnicities, these dolls do not favor any particular color or racial feature bringing together all the various colors of the Dominican Republic. We are different color. We white, brown, dark skin. We, are, we have different color. So they, didn't, they do the doll with no faces. Strong connections with friends and family provide the social support structure that keeps the Dominican Americans a close-knit community. A gathering of close family is always an opportunity to spread warmth and strengthen the ties that bind. 
it's very exciting. Um, it's an opportunity to share, it's an opportunity to have good conversation, to share good food. We might not have events planned at that day, but you know, we just go along as, as you go. We can play games, listen to music, can dance, uh, or just talk. Okay, um, yo preparé algo de comida aquí en la mesa y tengo bizcocho, así que vamos, ven, vamos a comer. Vamos, vamos a comer, venga, venga. Dejen la foto ahorita, seguimos hablando. Similar to possibly every other tight-knit cultural group, the Dominicans also emphasize and practice a few special qualities and virtues. Among the principal ones this community cherishes are politeness, respect, and most importantly, gratitude. One way to demonstrate politeness is, for example, let's say I'm eating. When I'm eating, I see the guest, I tell the guest, a buen tiempo, which means good time for you to arrive. And the guest then responds, may the food benefit you. Que te aproveche. Milkius explains that there are also a few important do's and don'ts of etiquette concerning social behavior. It would be rude if I offer you a plate of food and you don't take it. That's considered an, um, an offense. So if you go to a Dominican home, and you know, like especially in the, um, if I go anywhere, my aunt's house, I have to sit there and eat it. It doesn't matter if I'm full, I'm not hungry, or I don't like it. You know, it's very rude if they offer and you don't take it. Dominican cuisine has the punch, warmth, and heartiness that comes from a mixture of earthy spices and wholesome ingredients. The La Casa del Mofongo restaurant in New York City attracts a loyal clientele of both Dominicans and others who walk in to literally experience a slice of the Dominican Republic. This restaurant being open for three years. It's going to be three years next month. So the basic idea this came from Phyllis Cabrera. He's the owner and he just wants to open a big restaurant. We have customers are like 70-75% uh, Dominican. Then we have people from different cultures coming in, you know, to try Dominican food. Dominican cuisine is essentially an ingenious combination of Spanish, Amerindian, and African culinary influences. Mofongo is probably the most popular entree item on a Dominican menu card. This savory dish is made with fried plantains and served with chicken or meat broth. We call La Casa del Mofongo, so first we're going to do a mofongo. Mofongo is made basically from plantain, what is the Dominican, you know, basic Dominican food. It's a plantain that's deep fried and then they mash the plantain with meat and garlic. So this is the mofongo get done. This is the basic mofongo, and then we can put anything we want on the side. The plantains, we fry them, we bake them, we, you name it, we do it. I mean, we um, boil them, we mash them like mashed potatoes. Um, we add onions to them, we eat them with like sausage or cheese, and. We like to fry our food a lot, so. We use plantain for breakfast and for dinner. This is a uh, Dominican sausages. It's just prepared while we deep fry the sausages and we made the plantain deep fry also, what we call tostones. This is the plantain, this is the sausages. Sancocho is another favorite in the Dominican kitchen. The recipe was originally perfected by the Amerindians who lived on the native land before the Spanish arrived in the Dominican Republic. Over the years, it has imbibed the rich flavors of various cultures. The Dominican Sancocho, we can miss that. Dominican Sancocho is like, uh, it's like the signature of Dominican food. It's, uh, everybody wants to try the Dominican Sancocho. Dominican Sancocho is a kind of soup.
It's, it's came from the Indian, the basically uh, the Indian who live in the island when the Spanish people came. So this has been cooking for over 500 years. All right, this is the famous Dominican Sancocho. It's made, this is all the ingredients we, we use. Chicken, oxtail, um, this is all mixed together with a kind of potato, crunch, plantain, everything mixed together. And then we got laurel, sauce, um, oregano, garlic, sure, we can mix the oregano. That's very important in Dominican food. And adobo, cilantro, uh, pepper, onions, Celery, they all mix together, they all broiling together to make to make the beautiful Dominican Sancocho. Okay, he put a little bit of olive oil. You know, mix all the meat in there. Ooh. And then it's going the cilantro, you know, pepper, onion, celery, they all going together. After that, we put some water, you know, let them broil it in water. Yeah, it's going to be broiled for like an hour. And then all the what we call viandas all together. Okay, then we got that lomenea. Yeah. Okay, it's gonna be broiled. Okay, it's gonna be broiled for an hour, for another hour, and then we see the final review. Dominican food is just means from you know, the Indians who live in the, in the island when the Spanish people came, uh, Hispanic culture and African when they bring the slave uh, working in the um, sugar cane in Dominican Republic. So it's all mixed together. Dominican Americans often celebrate their zest for life with communal events which bring people together. The annual Dominican Cultural Festival, organized by Dominican Sunday Incorporated, highlights the culture, electrifying dances, and festive music of this spirited ethnic group. I love my culture, and that's why today we are doing what you what you see, because I bring from my country all, all I, all I see there. You know, the music, the clothes, everything. That's why we have this event today. Well, I think it's about uh, pride in the culture, and also for us to come together, promote, um, you know, good, clean, fun, family, unity among us and um, also to let other other cultures and, and other people in the area know um, you know what it what it is to be Dominican and you know the kind of things that we do and present. Dominican festivities are reflected even in the beautiful costumes showcased at such events. Costumes are not only colorful and musical, they also tell interesting stories of the places they originate from. This is called uh, Diablo Cajuelo and it has different, different colors because the colors represent the carnival and it goes by town. This is the Lechon that is from Santiago. They have from different towns, have different names. The corns, usually they have it clean or sometimes they have full of blooms. And they have um, orange, red, blue, they have uh, mirrors, uh, they have different uh, beats, and they have uh, whistles to make sound when they go around.
The Cultural Festival offers a viable platform for many young enthusiasts to showcase their dance and musical talents. Surrounded by warm cheer and applause, these participants literally put their best foot forward. Folkloric groups and events, women wear flowery skirts and men long white pants, sometimes uh, without shoes. Uh, the clothes are the colors of the flag. Fast-footed Dominicans often practice the merengue, a smooth harmonic dance move accompanied by the accordion and a two-sided drum called the tambora. Merengue is uh, very traditional, it's very, very big out there. Being the descendants of multiple ancestors, both African and Amerindian, the Dominicans take pride in their rich cultural heritage. As they rebuild their lives in a brand new homeland, the Dominican Americans embrace America's ethnic diversity while simultaneously cherishing their unique identities.